Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you all to our Fusion Prize virtual award ceremony. I am delighted that you have all joined us today to celebrate all the teams that have participated in the Fusion Prize Award and to congratulate the winners. As you all know, the Fusion Prize was created to encourage the development of new initiatives that use creativity to upskill future generations of Londoners, enabling them to succeed in the 21st century workplace. Most importantly, these initiatives seek to equip young people with the fusion skills that employers need to drive business. A mix of communication, thinking, organizational and creative skills, which are growing in demand across a wide range of sectors. Earlier in the year, I gave a lecture on the importance of fusion skills in business and how due to the demotion of the arts and the school curriculum, too few pupils are leaving education with sufficient creative and transferable skills. As policymakers, civic and business leaders, we need to find alternative ways to teach these skills to young people. Not only so that they have the skills to thrive in the world of work, but so UK businesses have the talent they need to prosper and drive the UK economy. During this challenging time, as the world economy is hit by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is more important than ever that we are protecting and strengthening our business sector. And as a businessman myself, as an ambassador for British business, both at home and abroad, I know that to do this, we must invest in future talent. Today, I could not be more proud of all the teams and the incredible ideas they've come up with to help train our young people. On behalf of the business community and indeed the City of London Corporation, thank you for all you have done to try to solve this skills gap. I very much look forward to hearing more about your projects over the next hour and to congratulate the winners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, my name is Caleb Femi. I am a teacher, a former teacher, former secondary school teacher. So when I, when I speak about the, 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 the lack of uh, creativity and, and the championing of, of innovation and, and imagination um, in, in the current curriculum and the importance of it, um, for the for the survival of the new young generation coming through who are, are growing up in a, a very peculiar time now more than ever it's important for us to to, to champion creativity um, and to encourage them to to look towards innovative ideas um, and interesting ways of, of approaching problems and and um, establishing new theories in, in problem solving for the for the betterment of of society today especially in these uh peculiar times and it's that same creativity that has led to me being able to to be a full-time poet uh, a published poet um and and i guess my own contribution to to the conversation is to is to champion the the young people who are often misrepresented or or uh, marginalized and and to champion the the creativity that um, the well of creativity and potential that exists within them this is called gentle youth if retribution is what the youths wanted not one brick will still sit on this city skyline we're always such theatrics for the time being we browse through the catalog of anarchy underline moments in history and conclude that everyone just wants to go home. Who would have known the streets were so frail to fall apart this easily? The youths run in all directions like scared cattle. Frightened animals are the most, are the, frightened animals are the most dangerous to others and themselves. That's just basic zoology. The youths of today are cherry stems loaded in a magazine of a gun the news says different. They say that the youths will come for you in the small of the night. What we're actually doing is making music, tweeting, Instagramming, unwrinkling nightlight from skin. One of us saw visions of a new home, a new world 
A new sky so blue it's black too. We're all sat around listening to him in tears. Utes robbed of youth, robbed of a rocking cradle, singing the ballad of the youthful. If sorrow must come for us, let it collect us at our homes. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the screening of the Fusion Prize film. Thank you. The Fusion Prize is important because it encourages creativity. You have to bring to bear all of those fusion skills. Fusion Prize is an initiative set up by Foundation for Future London, East Bank, Culture Mile. We launched a challenge to London's talent and we said help us create innovative solutions for our young Londoners to develop the soft skills that they require for employers in the workplace today and in the future. There's a set of skills called fusion skills that we want to foster and help build and develop, particularly in groups of young people who may not have access to all of the resources that uh, you and I might have. What we've tried to do is look at those skills, see which ones that have the highest priority and create a list of 12 fusion skills. Things like problem solving, communication, creativity, adaptability, all the different things that we need in order to navigate ourselves in a changing world. We're asking for teams of people to come together, cross-disciplinary teams, all together to address this question. And we're looking for innovative ways of, of connecting with young people. We really wanted people to form new collaborations, form new relationships. Of course, ultimately, we will be choosing one team to go forward for the £50,000 prize to make this project a reality. So when we set out in 2019 and launched the Fusion Prize, we have been inundated with all sorts of possibilities. We wanted to bring communities together, so the first part of it was actually a series of meetings. So we ran workshops, we had get-togethers. Which people could come and attend and learn and meet and network up with other people, but also kind of evolve and develop their ideas. And there were 66 applications and the judges were able to shortlist to six projects. So we are The Great Create. We are going to be setting creative challenges in schools and they're facilitated by student leaders and they're for students and by students. So in this way we're giving a lot of agency to the students so that we can have creativity in a manner of fields, not only arts and drama but maths and science too. My name is John. The name of the project is Awake. What we're proposing is a course of study and it's designed for young people to think about how to design experiences, what that means, perhaps for people that traditionally would not have been able to get access to creative education or for whom barriers to creative opportunity would prevent them from doing such a thing. It's a course, it takes 36 weeks, and it's designed to give young people fusion skills. NOLO is a gamified platform which allows young people to earn points for their hobbies, which then translates into accreditation and a data set of what skills they have and where the skills skills are a bit weaker, which allows them to be employable later on in the future. Then you can get accreditation for it, um, which means that you can then prove to an employer that you hold those skills. Uh, our project is the Nexus. It's a program focused on uh, using project-based learning to develop digital media skills and also transferable skills, i.e. The, the fusion skills, through the application of those digital media skills to using a range of uh, digital media uh, applications to do that, such as you know, VR, AR, and also to connect them to their communities to essentially enrich their lives and uh, have opportunities. The project that we pitched for the Fusion Prize is called The Pattern. It's about defining like, the job roles of the future for young people, which we think is creative production and cultural production mainly, creating events for young people, by young people, that focus on their journeys and their walks of life. We'll be using peer facilitation between them and cultural leaders that we have connections with already to incubate kind of the future of like, London's creative industry. My name is Rachel, I'm from Muted Media. We aim to take um, a new approach to journalism and diversify the media landscape. We want to create content with people from the margins, from anywhere inside the criminal justice system to the care system.
Those six projects re received £1,000 of seed funding to develop their projects. The whole pandemic has just given even further grounds for why this is so, so important and so urgent. The winning team, the winning proposal, the winning idea will get funds to help take that through to the next stage, to pilot, to build, to develop this project. And the reason we want this is because we absolutely want to impact the lives of young people. I think the thing about fusion skills is that I think they're just about being human, about the way we learn, it's about who we are, creativity, it's about communications, it's about learning in different ways. And I think that makes society a better place, but it's also really crucial for economy. It shows that there is a demand out there for the fusion skills uh, and it's exciting because we're going to come up with some great new ideas uh, that we are going to be able to help the new generation. Putting our heads together and actually funding these brilliant, amazing ideas who will be, I think, creating the jobs and skills of the future. Wow, what a, um, a really good introduction to um, uh, what the Fusion Prize is all about, and to uh, the five final teams who made it through from a great big, huge group of uh, people who submitted. It was quite extraordinary, the level of, um, of uh, skill that, were, that was applied to um, this project. I'm Sharon. I am the uh, chair of the jury, uh, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper now into um, the, the, uh, uh, the project, the, the, the Fusion Prize itself, and um, into our uh, five shortlisted teams. And I'm going to do that with the help of our jury members uh, and those and our partner. Um, so we have in the room uh, Maria, Alison, Juliet and Stephen, and I'm going to ask you to just introduce yourself. So starting with Maria. Foundation Future London, and we were lucky enough and thankful to the City of London for um, helping us collaborate with, uh, with our partners at Cultural Mile in developing this amazing um, Fusion Prize project and developing and supporting those um, skills, uh, fusion skills, which are absolutely crucial for the future. Thank you, Maria. Alison, tell us about yourself. Yes, thanks, Sharon. Well, I'm one of the governors of the Museum of London, so I know what a hard job you're doing there, as well as with this Fusion panel. So thank you. I'm also an alderman, an elected member of the City of London Corporation. And I must say, I was intrigued by the idea and very honoured to be asked to be on the panel. And then when I got involved, seeing the young people, seeing the symposia that were ran, and then working with the judging panel, it's infused and energised me about how much is there out for us to just grab and to, to help mould and to look to our future in a very, very happy and positive way. Thank you, Alison. Juliet. Hello everyone, I, my name is Juliet and I'm the founder of Astawa Trust and I've spent over a decade transforming and creating cultural spaces, creative and cultural spaces for uh, Londoners and to me being um, here as part of the panel was such an exciting prospect and I've learned so much from all of our applicants, from our fellow judges and I think that if we're going to really transform the skills gap of young Londoners, um, the Fusion Prize has been a great um, project to do that. Thank you, Julia. And finally, Stephen. Oh, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Stephen Heppel. I'm a professor of learning innovation in um, UCJC in Madrid, uh, but I live in England, just up the road from the city. And uh, this has been a fabulous experience. Well, you, you've heard it all really already. William is saying, golly gosh, we need ingenuity if we're going to survive in the, um, the tough new world coming straight at us. And Caleb saying, we're here, we're ingenious, we're talented, you know, bring it on. And, you know, just watching all that happen with these, uh, these fabulously ingenious presentations has been a joy. But there's also been a level that um, Juliet put a finger on, really, of learning from each other. And I think this has just been a learn fest for all of us. And it's, it's very indicative, I think, of um, the way the world's going. So it's been a joy to be part of. Brilliant. I, kind of, I think I'd like to echo that. I think we've all... The, the panel and the jury have all enhanced our own fusion skills and it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a lesson to us all. It just never stops. 
and we can only get better, we can only hone our skills and you realize, and I do every day, that fusion skills are, I can say honestly, fusion skills are why I'm here. It's not, I'm, I'm not the kind of brains of Britain, it's only because I've honed all those other skills. Um, in fact, I'm certainly not the brains of Britain, just in case you were wondering. Um, so I would like to delve deeply with the help of, um, with the help of Alison, Juliet, Maria and Stephen into some of the concepts behind the Fusion Prize, our experience and to, uh, and, and to ask them uh, about uh, some of the teams themselves. So first of all, this is a question to uh, Maria. Let's start with Maria. Uh, you know, Culture Mile and the Foundation for Future London decided to run the first ever Fusion Prize. Um, can you tell me why for, uh, this is pertinent for the Foundation for Future London, why it's important to your organization and what do you see out there that this prize could help with? Yeah. So the foundation's an inclusive grant maker and we're also a fundraiser. And we're fundraising for East Bank, which is a new cultural quarter in East London. It has an amazing talented community, it has social entrepreneurs, it has business, and it has four amazing boroughs, Walton Forest, Tower, Hamlet, um, Newham and Hackney. And one of our commitments as a foundation is to consistently um, provide the resources that people need to actually shine. Um, we were also tasked with bringing in and supporting 2,500 new jobs, um, but bringing in 1.5 million um, pounds into local East London and wider London um, local economy. And it, it strikes me and it strikes my colleagues, Amy and Ashton and the rest of the foundation team is that these skills are not soft skills. They are just the kind of skills that I wish as a child I'd been able to kind of shine in because I'm not brains of Britain either. And I just saw with my colleagues when we saw the um, applicants and the conversations with Culture Mile partners and um, the judges, it's just been amazing about how much talent and ideas and personality is out there. And I don't know if people were on the um, Fusion City um, event a couple of weeks ago, and it was just amazing. It just illustrated the importance of Fusion Prize to local economies, national economies, and to creativity and valuing them. Um, you know, this is hard edged up, it's social and economic value. And without it, we're not gonna survive, especially in the time of C19, we need to bring together and acknowledge the energy and skills behind fusion skills and, and really support those. And so the foundation is, is really happy to be working on this and supporting and funding the Fusion Prize um, winners, the whole event, um, but also looking how we work in the future with Culture Mile. I think it's, for me personally, it was absolutely amazing going to dinner with the mayor and just talking to all of those fantastic people with those brilliant ideas. And I wish we could give every one of them the prize. Yeah, so do we. That's <laughs> Everyone a prize, every single person. Yeah. Um, the and you know, and, and I think you you said something really important, which is uh, actually we should stop calling them soft skills because they're not. They're blooming hard skills. <laughs> they're hard skills to attain. They're hard. They're, and there's, in fact, maybe they're even harder than all the technical skills and uh, academic qualifications. So I think you're 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 right, Maria. So thank you for that. And now a question for Julia, Alison and Stephen, because they were on the, ju the, the jury. We had uh, other people on the jury as well who couldn't be with us today. So Alison, when you f were first approached to sit on the judging panel, what were your thoughts? And um, what uh, enticed you to give up all your time and energy to be part of this? Well, Sharon, in my sort of work life, I'm a lawyer. So to be honest, going into this sort of whole cultural area was quite sort of daunting for me. I felt out of my comfort zone. But at the same time, I have young people working here in my firm, and I know how important it is that they get as much help as they possibly can. And it's not just the school routine learning, uh, which not everybody can get in, in, in the best of circumstances. So what excited me was to be part of that journey, to see if some way I could help organizations and frankly you know well done to the cultural organizations who are putting their might behind this and their time and effort 
in working with the young people through the whole process. So it was that energy which it absolutely rebounded, as often does happen, rebounded in, in the joy and the enthusiasm and the energy it's given me by being involved. So thank you. That's amazing. Also, Alison, look, look, Alison did herself down then. She said, oh, I'm a lawyer. Alison is a really top notch lawyer and a politician and so many other things. So to hear Alison say she was a bit daunted by coming out of her comfort zone goes to show that it just never goes away, no matter whatever lofty, lofty heights we all attain. Now, Stephen, tell me from your lofty height why you were attracted to, uh, the, uh, to be a judge. Well, I mean, I'll be honest, it was, um, you know, a lot of my career, I've been able to see how good kids can be. And, you know, we, we ran a project for 10 years for kids who have been excluded from school and they were flipping brilliant, you know. And, you know, if you look at the city at the moment, it's gone awful quiet in the middle. Um, and yet it hasn't because although the pavements are quiet and the cafes are quiet, it's an incredible buzz of creativity and ingenuity and community all hanging on in the ether as we are now, you know. And, and the youngsters have got the keys to that door. And I think... Caleb said it pretty well in his rather excellent poem, you know, that people look at kids and see deficiencies. I look at them and see just astonishing excellence. And in all the years I've been involved in any of these things, when we, um, when we surprise people with the ambition of what we ask of them, they always astonish us right back with their response. And I said yes, because I just wanted to be astonished. And I have been. I absolutely have been being fabulous. <laughs> That's brilliant. And Juliet, have you been astonished too? I've been incredibly ast astonished. I think that um, if everyone could also be a judge, that would be <laughs> fantastic. I mean, I was um, really uh, curious to be part of this journey um, because when I reflected back on sort of my um, career, starting off sort of working in youth work, you know, years and years ago, and then community organising and then creating cultural spaces, the core thing that binds it together is the role that arts and culture was always used as a tool to transform, to build, um, to unlock. And I think that when I read sort of the, uh, the premise of the Fusion Prize is that, you know, the emphasis on creative and cultural participation as a way of upskilling young Londoners. And I thought if that can be put, if that is a core uh, of this prize, then that was to me just, just so exciting um, because sometimes, you know, arts and culture can be put as a sort of a side thing and something that's just for fun. But actually, this is this is a tool. This is a tool that we can use to 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 upskill and to to create an amazing, incredible future workforce. So I was just yeah. And having read all the applicants, I just thought, what we've been missing out. <laughs> we've really been missing out on these creative ideas. So um, yeah, um, it's been an incredible journey. So I think I think one of the big take homes from this, isn't it, has been that you know we've we've. Um, everyone uh, who's submitted and got this far is a winner. And, and there's all sorts of ways in which we want to continue to support those projects. So we will pick all those up. Now let's go on to something that Maria, you mentioned. Um, and um, uh, it's kind of really interesting about the process that we've gone through. It was picked up in the film as well and people could see the images. It's been an intense and deep process you talked a bit about this, Maria. What do you think the value of the symposia and the kind of helping and guiding the teams through the, with, their, with their projects has, has had on the caliber of the applicants in the end? Do you know, I think there was so much done by both the Foundation for Future London, but also Culture Mile. And um, I think what we did together was collaborate and listen to what people needed. And so it was a very open book and the listening um, through my colleagues, Amy and Ashley, what, what do you need as potential participants? And, you know, conversations with Rosemara and other colleagues. And I think what they delivered is a whole um, kind of menu of things that might appeal to different people. We had workshops, we had workshops in, in different venues, we had workshops um, both in um, Plex Elise, but also in um, arts and culture um, organizations um, in Hackney. And we really reached out to a very wide network of young and older people. And it was, hey, if you have an idea, it's not a stupid one, come and have a conversation. And also what I really loved was the fact that 
there were lots of different mini conversations and mini workshops and people could just you know come in and pick the things that they were kind of interested in and I think what was also good is that there was an opportunity for all the potential participants to come in and talk to people and I remember being in a room, um, I think with Juliet actually and others, and about three other people, and we were just wowed by all these ideas around, I was struck by ideas around inclusive public spaces and um, the entrepreneurship and the kind of arts and culture and economy that people could bring around the public place and, and architecture. But there was so much more. And I, I think what we did was listen, um, co-designed those venues, made sure they were accessible, and we just made them, I think, fresh. Mm. So, you know, we had poets like Caleb, who, by the way, Caleb is brilliant. And, you know, we had people talking about music and books. And, and I've never seen such an inclusive breadth of individuals. It was heartwarming with mm. so many amazing ideas. And I think for me personally, I'm sure for my colleagues, is I wish we could have given everyone the same amount of money as the prize, but we can't do that. And we got some brilliant people coming to the table right at the very end, who, who might, you know, the, the final, the final um, groups. But I think there are many, many more out there. So we have to keep doing what we're doing and do it better because there's certainly a need for this program, Fusion Skills. I think you're so right, and you know, and I'm sure if there's anybody in our audience who who are, who are looking for great projects to fund and great people to back come and knock on our door because and uh, we can give you names and addresses. Uh, so Juliet, I saw you uh, nodding violently <laughs> about uh, um, in, in agreement with Maria. Absolutely, absolutely. The of the symposium. Tell us what it was like for you. Um, I, I concur with everything Maria said. I mean, I would say, I would also add that it was equally a, a events that were uh, places for learning so there were some incredible industry leaders that did, you know, master classes where I went. I, know, I was not jotting down notes as well, um, but also they were fun. I mean, every event had a, an element of performance, either at the beginning or the middle, at the end. Um, and I think again, when you think about, you know, what makes you learn and what captures your mind, it's all of these, you know, uh, little synopsis of arts and culture that 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 um, you know makes your senses uh, uh, creative and innovates you and inspires you. Um, I think my my reflection of, of of the events were that you know there was there was always a buzz in the room. You know, people were chatting and the way it was designed, people you know applicants or potential applicants could hop around and speak to different individuals. I was overhearing. Uh, applicants sharing other, their ideas, gauging feedback, but also some applicants deciding, actually, I want to collaborate with you. I'm going to, I'm not going to apply, but actually, I think I'm better placed collaborating. Um, but there are also uh, people at the events that were just there to support, to lend their expertise. I spoke to faith leaders. I spoke to teachers. Um, there were investors, bankers, um, yeah, and music managers who were just there to say, I'm just, I'm just here. And if anyone has a question where I can support, I'm happy to help. And I think that allowed for our applicants to feel like they could test their ideas, they could sort of get feedback, refine uh, and develop it further and, and also just get that agency of, of knowing that their, their ideas you know, meant something. Because sometimes when you're developing an idea in silo at home, you, know, you might not get that, that, that sort of open feedback. So I, I think that the events really gave a foundation to the applicants and it, and it showed itself in the quality of applicants that we, that we got, the applications that we got. Um, so you could, and I think it also, I learned that, you know, it doesn't matter if even if an idea is similar, it's unique to that particular individual or that particular team because we're all different and we all have our own internal creativity. That means the way we'll express it will be incredibly different. So that's something that I took away from it. Oh, great. And, you know, and I, I'm just reflecting on, yeah, there is a real sense of urgency in the room. And, and during the course of this process, which has been long and elongated because of the situation we find ourselves in now, I mean, we never imagined that our awards ceremony would be in the Zoom in virtual, in a virtual space at all, did we? Uh, we all wanted to be in the mansion house, with the, sitting with you, Lord Mayor. Um, but the, um, you know, and, and, the, and Caleb's very poignant poem and um, reminds us now that, um, you know, this Fusion Prize, the work of uh, the teams is actually needed more than ever, perhaps. 
and um, we 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 know that um, those young people who face the highest barriers, the, the biggest barriers, the the widest barriers, are those that are going to be really struck by this situation in COVID mm -hmm. the worst. Um, they're going to be knocked back, could be knocked back even further. So um, it's really worth um, a while for us all to consider. It's made me really consider, of course, you know, what we can do individually and with our organisations and the kind of challenge that you've both, we've all talked about, about how the Fusion Prize, um, how, how the Fusion Prize itself can be more sustained, can sustain into the future itself as a prize mm -hmm. or as an initiative or as a process. So I think that's something we should all be thinking about. We're going to go into the projects themselves now and the teams and each of us who were on the jury, so the jury members in this panel, are going to talk a little bit about each of the teams. Now you've seen from the video, uh, the team members um, talk about um, their projects themselves. But, uh, but, but we're going to just give our own reflections on the project, uh, very short reflections, um, uh, before we wrap up and, end, and, and go to the Lord Mayor who will tell us who the winner is. So, so I'd, I'd like to talk about muted media. Um, muted media, uh, I think the, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, it, it's all in the title, muted media. What a, what a really powerful uh, name to give yourselves and the project. A team who are focused on the expertise of two individuals who deeply know uh, and work with, in a very deep sense, people who are part of the criminal justice system and who are in care. And they use their practice to unmute <laughs> in a way and to give voice to people through the power of journalism through radio through building those skills um script writing through to creating um programs and that for me was a very powerful project because you could see the tangible impact on individuals impressive people doing impressive work um, and it was a, a real joy to hear the passion of, um, of, of the team who were so dedicated to this really important cause. So a big, big uh, thank you to Muted Media. Juliet, seeing as you're on my screen in a big way, will you tell us about <laughs> the next Absolutely. Um, on behalf of the judges, I'd really like to um, thank the Nexus, sort of, um, Ian and Atif for their uh, incredible proposals. So the Nexus um, pitched a, a solution that incorporates um, active learning uh, as a way of delivering authentic work experiences uh, for young Londoners. So their approach was to say, we need to tap into the interests and passions um, that young people have, and then from there extrapolate uh, and support them to um, add on to their fusion skills. We cannot um, assume that they don't have any fusion skills because young people, uh, by their very nature, uh, if they're fulfilling their passion, they are already developing that. And um, so they created um, a, a project that would allow um, young people to have this sort of person-centered approach, um, take their passion and they would support them through um, different workshops, through mentorship, to uh, build their fusion skills. And this would be captured um, uh, uh, digitally through, through a digital badge that then um, they can take to their employers or to the industry um, to really showcase that they have their skills and to get into uh, the employment market. And I think what we were impressed with was sort of the gam gamification of their uh, proposal um, I think that's very pertinent to sort of the 21st century, but also it was very strongly underpinned by um, um, academic and educational research. So everything they proposed had a, a strong basis to it in how young people learn and what kind of environment you need. And I think for me, um, that was that, that came about um, um, really strongly. And I think um, finally, it's 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 the um, uh, the link between the soft and the, and the technical skills, um, as well as um, the, the core link um, with ensuring that young people really follow their, 
their, their passion as, as, as a starting point. So I'd really like to thank the Nexus for their, for their, for their project and, um, and yeah, and uh, we'll, 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 we'll hope to see you soon. <laughs> uh, and, and Alison, will you tell us about Awake? Yes, thanks, uh, Sharon. Awake was one of those really innovative ideas that uh, you know, blew my mind a little bit. It was talking all about experience design. And for those on the panel who were really into design world, you know, knew all about it, but were themselves also engaged with it. Um, it's an area that on the whole, the people involved, frankly, do come from a situation where they've got, you know, obviously been to university or been to some kind of experience. You know, they've got, uh, if you like, a, a head start on this. And so what was important in this as in all the other um, projects is that it's actually for those people who are hidden, who aren't able to be able to do that. So a really intensive and quite long course was proposed to allow these young people to work very intensively. And so they would absolutely skill up in an area which was, frankly, it's an area of really important viability for jobs. I have no doubt that people going through this course would end up with a very good job at the end of it. And that's also very important, as well as getting the skills, it's getting a job. So that was really impressive. Again, as we've heard, two very impressive professional people presenting this, John Fast and Steph Singer, absolutely, you know, absolutely had the whole thing nailed in their own, their own professional expertise and academic experience were able to present to us in a way that was very, very compelling. And I feel that this is a really viable project. You were saying, if there's anybody out there who wants to fund something um, you know, this is a really viable project that, you know, is really worth going with. So I really give my hands out to Awake and really wish them well. Thank you, Alison. And Stephen, will you tell us about NOLO? Yes, I will. I mean, it's um, I'm just reflecting really that the, you know, what does a city need? It needs fresh perspectives, it needs ingenuity, it needs... Um, all the things that we've seen through this process. And I think every single um, group who presented to us, you know, we learned from them, they were talented, but they were just the tip of the iceberg of a huge talent of people that were sitting underneath them, you know, if you like it, that their projects were going to support, that we're going to bring, you know, that, that, that ingenuity into the city through, through new routes, you know, and, and the old traditional roots of have you got the right A-levels, have you been to the right college, have you got the right degree, is not going to solve the problems that are coming at us daily, you know, of um, COVID, water shortage, probably a civil war in America this Thursday, you know, goodness knows what else is coming, you know, we don't know, but the problems are coming thick and fast at us and we need fresh eyes. So why NOLO was particularly interesting was because it was a way of, of capturing those fresh eyes and the things that they've learned. I think every parent, every teacher, everybody in the room will know that during um, lockdown, kids didn't really do the things they were supposed to do that the school sent home, but they went off and did remarkable things. You know, they, they pursued in depth, as on the wall behind me, you know, there's a space rocket hanging up where my seven-year-old granddaughter has become space crazy, you know, and it's not in her curriculum, but she's done so much. And what the NOLO gang really understood was that those, those brilliant sort of darts off into, into eclectic and polymathic directions, you know, needed to be captured and tabulated. And they had a nice little app whose idea it was to simply capture all the cool things people have been doing to build out what they say in the literary is ipsative referencing, that sense of myself moving forward and be able to show them to employers and say, well, never mind, I haven't quite got the A-levels you were looking for or the degree you were looking for, but I'll tell you what, have I done some cool stuff? Let's talk about it. And that seemed to me to be an enormously important engine for huge numbers of Londoners to be able to really show off how good they were. And boy, is that what we need? So I was, uh, I liked them. I liked them. <laughs> and, and from my perspective, um, I'm going to talk about the pattern. Um, and the pattern brought passion, uh, passion built from kind of from their own lived experience. And, and the, uh, the passions project was really putting, was, a, was by young people, for young people, and using real life um, projects uh, which were, had, have social and positive impact in 
communities as the learning ground for the fusion, for fusion skills. And young people will be taken along and could be taken along with a group of exceptional mentors, the support of people who are really, um, uh, could have a really big influence on the individual's life. So this was a, this is a project which uh, was put to us, which has the ability to um, affect uh, young people's lives and uh, skills in a kind of very personal way using a project in a real life form with deep and intense support from a great mentors. So we've summed up the project. I've, I'm getting all sorts of messages to hurry us all along. I'm not going to, of course we will, but we're all so passionate ourselves about this, aren't we? Um, so before the Lord Mayor announces the winner, let's just re pause to reflect. We are, the winning team will receive a 50,000 um, pound uh, grant to create and make their project into a live pilot project. This will run for six months and uh, will conclude uh, in April. Meanwhile, we will be giving support, advice and guidance and all sorts of other things, anything we can think of to every team that you've heard mentioned today. So with that, I am going to now pass over to the Lord Mayor. Well, firstly, uh, what a wonderful afternoon and, and a, a, a great way uh, to, uh, to spend the afternoon. And thank you, Caleb, for that brilliant reading. And thank you to Sharon for chairing the panel a discussion, as well as our panelists, Maria, Alison, Juliet and Stephen. Uh, thank you very much for, for being part of, of this. Um, and before I announce them, I'd also like to thank you know, all, all the judges for the job they've done uh, in choosing the finalists. A big thanks uh, to Sharon, uh, Emin, Alison Coward, uh, Asif Khan, Alison Gowan, and Juliet Khan as well. Uh, uh, Sarnez Amidi, Stephen Heppel, and Clive Holton. Uh, and finally, I would also like to thank the five finalist teams for all the work and effort they have put into creating these groundbreaking projects. Uh, thank you, NOLO, the Nexus, uh, Muted Media, the Pattern, and Awake. Uh, and having met all of the finalists in person before lockdown, I know the passion that they have all brought to this competition, and that lunch is uh, very much in my memory. It seems a long time ago, mind you. A lot's happened between now and then, but, uh, but the young people that they work with, uh, they work with, with has always been at the centre of their work, and I'm confident that all, all these projects have the potential to be highly successful. Uh, and most of all, each of these projects have proven that encouraging young people to engage with culture is an excellent way for them to develop uh, the key skills the employers are looking for. Uh, creativity and creative thinking are regularly cited as the most desirable skills in potential candidates. Uh, with the creative and cultural industries under threat at the moment, this prize is important in its championing of the societal contribution, something which we must all protect. While there can only be one winner today, the other four innovative and vital ideas that have been planned are ready for delivery. Uh, so for all the funding bodies here with us today, I would encourage you to get in touch with our teams. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, with no, without further ado. Uh, so the winner of the first Fusion Prize Award goes to the pattern. Congratulations, all of you. Your idea to develop peer lending workshops with subcultural leaders will empower young people from fringe groups to build inclusive spaces for their communities. Well done to all of you. And can I ask you all to join me in giving uh, Nate and Ao from the, from the pattern a virtual round of applause again. <laughs> well hey, um, you're still getting used to the video calls. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, really. uh, thank you, thank you. And um, thank you to all of you guys from Future London, Lord Mayor. Um, 
and coach from our to that for actually believing in us. Um, I think for us it's just like incredible. Um, just growing up in like Hackney and like being the old Hackney, like a lot of these spaces weren't open to us and haven't been. Um, and I feel like um, this is the a shift, particularly in my point of view and point of view of how we can support young people to actually like make a shift in their way they see the world and how they interact with the world. Um, it's important to us to just let them know that it's theirs. And I think with this project, we're going to make sure we do that. Working with some people who are doing amazing things in the city to highlight fringe communities and to do incredible work. And so, yeah, we're really passionate to bring this to life and thankful um, for the opportunity to work with these amazing institutions that we've looked at um, and are happy to kind of put a door stop in between the doors of so that we can bring in more people just like us. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm just going to hand over to Ayo. Yeah, no, um, yeah, thank you very, very much. Um, thank you, obviously, to the to the Lord Mayor. Um, yeah, I remember that dinner, it was it was nice and fancy. Um, maybe we can do it again sometime. Um, but um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to the kind of whole kind of fusion prize. Um, everyone that was involved, all of the institutions, um, Rosemara for, for running it and everyone on, on, on the on the course who kind of helped us out. Um, but I think yeah, as everyone said today, um, we're so happy that we're going to be able to implement this with a kind of group of uh, young people from so many different backgrounds, whether it's climate strikers, people trying to foster black radio, Muslim sisterhood, um, so, so, so many different uh, people from different communities that we can bring into these spaces uh, and just show that, yeah, London is a space for all. And I think... Um, as we always try and say, like, <clears throat> yeah, the, the youth will kind of always win. And, and it's just nice to see uh, a lot of the kind of, um, dare I say, older generation and um, passing down that knowledge with that kind of each one teach one message and really just trying to make sure that, yes, these skills are passed on, but then they're also um, taken in, in their own way. And, 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 and the kids and, 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 and people can one day, hopefully, be the type of people who can yet do this again for the next generation. So um, yeah, first of all, big thank you. And also a, a big thank you to everyone else that we did this with, um, the Awake team, the Great Create, NOLO, Muted Media, um, Nexus, all of those kind of great ideas that if I'm honest with you, I was jealous I didn't come up with uh, myself as well. But um, all in all, um, we just want to say a big, big thank you to everyone. Um, we're so grateful for the Fusion Prize and yeah, um, I can't stop smiling and, and also a big kind of thing of, um, yeah, it, this is a really, really important and, and we hope that there are people there that are going to be able to fund this opportunity for, for, for next year as well. Um, so yeah, please, please uh, support this, these types of initiatives. We need way, way more of this type of stuff, especially at this time because um, there's a lot more kind of interesting people other than ourselves doing great things, not just on this call. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up now, but thank you very, very much. Thank you, Nate, and thank you, Io, for, for such great speeches. Um, it's really interesting to consider that, to, to hear that you consider yourselves to be the older generation, uh, <laughs> or with us. <laughs> I love that, I love that, Sharon, you and I together. Hello, oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, uh, it, it's been phenomenal. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord Mayor, for giving your leadership and support to the Fusion Prize um, and for guiding us through this and for providing such momentous events such as the wonderful get together we all had. Um, uh, around uh, around the lunch table in Mansion House. Um, the hard work really starts now. Uh, the pattern, really sorry to tell you, it's roll your sleeves up time, six months. Let's make this pilot really, really work hard. Thank you to, a big, a big thank you to Rose Mara who has put a lot of effort into this and to the judges and to the Foundation for Future London but most of all, to everybody in the room, all of the teams, we will be in touch. There is so much more we can do together. This is a remarkable event. And um, I think it's the start of something really exceptional. So thank you everybody for joining us. And thank you, Sharon.
Very good. And let's let's have another lunch in the new, in the new year to celebrate this. Yes. Very good. Well done everyone.